Hey, what's up everybody? So, good news. Just yesterday on Sunday, October 30th, 2011, Russia successfully launched a Progress resupply ship to send new supplies to the International Space Station. This is good news because it means that we don't need to demand the space station and the private companies that are going to be sending demo flights to the, the station early next year are going to be able to continue as planned. This also means that the next crew rotation is going to be able to take place later on in November, and that crew is going to be launching on the same Soyuz rocket that just yesterday successfully launched the Progress resupply ship into orbit. Now, all the trouble with the Soyuz rocket got started back on August 24th when uh, it didn't separate and uh, the Progress resupply ship crashed. And uh, they had a successful launch from uh, French Guiana at the Kuro spaceport. Uh, they launched a couple of satellites, and you can find out a little bit more about that from uh, Space Vidcast's new space pod, which they just released. I'm going to put a little link to it right there. Uh, welcome back, Space Vidcast. Anyway, I'm getting a little sidetracked there. After the Soyuz launch from uh, French Guiana, they had uh, yesterday their successful launch with the Progress, and then, like I said, they're going to have the crew later on in November. And then SpaceX is going to be having their mission, which is going to hopefully be not only rendezvousing, but docking with the space station as well. And then uh, later in February, Orbital Sciences is hoping to uh, launch their Taurus 2 rocket for the first time. And they're not going to have a test mission going to the International Space Station until later uh, next year. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. I, I, I need to give Orbital Sciences uh, their own video and talk about everything that they're doing. Um, but uh, congratulations, Russia, on your successful launch, and uh, thank you for saving the space station. Now, even though Russia has saved the space station, China has launched their own, and congratulations, China, you've been able to launch the Tiangong Space Module successfully into orbit. You can watch a little video right here to find out a little bit more information that I give about the uh, Tiangong 1 Space Module. And uh, what they're planning on doing is having uh, one of their uh, manned spacecraft called the Shenzhou spacecraft be able to rendezvous and dock with the space station. There's not going to be any crew on board, it's all going to be automated, but the whole point of doing this is to prove that they can do rendezvous and docking. They have had satellites rendezvous with each other, but they haven't had anything actually physically dock with each anything yet. So uh, uh, the Shenzhou mission that's going to be doing that is uh, Shenzhou 8, and that's going to be launching uh, in November as well. So I'd just like to wish everyone over at the Chinese Space Agency good luck and I hope everything goes well with that mission and you're able to proceed with uh, Shenzhou 9 and 10 and uh, eventually make your near class space station that you want to make. Now someone who doesn't want China to succeed is uh, Robert Bigelow. I recently went to the International Symposium for Personal and Commercial Space Flight or the ISPCS conference that was held in Las Cruces, New Mexico and uh, Robert Bigelow gave a speech there uh, mainly about China. So let me share with you just a little snippet of uh, what he said about China. You can't pick up a magazine or newspaper without reading about the emerging power of China. But I believe the best by far is yet to come for China. I have thought about the Chinese space program that includes as a centerpiece landing Chinese on the moon and creating a base. And it's been publicized it's in the neighborhood of 2020, 2021, somewhere in that vicinity. I have concluded that this is, of course, part of their national vision, but very different from the American lunar program. I have reasoned that China will not just send their Taikonauts to make footprints and collect dirt. Okay, right, the dirt. <laughs> there, would re there would be really no point and China simply repeating what the Americans did. When you have the opportunity for creating a sea change in global power that may only come along in a thousand years of this magnitude, since China is already committed to going to the moon, thereby risk risking national honor, life, and capital in trying to succeed in these efforts, why not take the all-important syllogistic next step? Ownership. Ownership, ownership. I believe they will make ownership claims wherever they land and are able to move about. And this process shall continue for years until they have surveyed, marked, and claimed the entire body. Almost brings me to tears. No, not much of this I really do believe this. I have thought about this a lot for the last couple of years. Uh, 
space program, Chang'e 2, they have a step-by-step -step process here that's, that's interesting. Chang'e 2 is a lunar probe launched in 2010 to test lunar orbital mapping and, and soft lunar landings. China built its first uh, stealth fighter bomber. The West hasn't decided uh, yet exactly which it is. In August of 2010, China conducted a very close maneuver of two satellites to allow them to inspect each other at a range of 200 yards. That's, that's good. That's a bit tricky. And in 2011, uh, Taigong-1 uh, was launched, uh, uh, was, was their first space lab module. And 2013, Chang'e 3 is intended to be the first unmanned lunar landing craft. In 2017, they will execute a lunar sample return mission. What's next? <laughs> you have to have the ability to stay focused. And does China have that ability? Yeah, they have a reputation for it. They have their five-year plans. And uh, China is actually pretty famous historically for being able to maintain its focus and, and stay on point. So Bob, your first question is, if Chinese lunar supremacy is a concern, <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> if Chinese lunar supremacy is a concern, why not cooperate? It's a case of keeping friends close and enemies closer. They can't claim sole ownership on joint ventures. If they would go for it, I think that would be a great idea. If they would go for it, a piece of something is better than a piece of nothing. Yeah. So, I agree with a few things that he said. I believe that he's right, that China has the motivation and they have the plans and they have the ability to stay focused and stay on point. And I believe that they will achieve many of the goals that they've set for themselves, if not all the goals that they've set for themselves. However, I disagree that it's China that isn't willing to cooperate. I think that it's NASA and more Congress telling NASA not to cooperate. But I could be wrong, so correct me on that if I am, but I don't know. I think that it would be awesome if we could be able to cooperate with them and be able to have a, a, a joint ownership in, in their ventures. And maybe ownership's the wrong word for it, but I don't know. Before I get too into that though, I just want to congratulate China again for their accomplishments and wish them luck on their future goals that they have. And congratulations to Russia for uh, their successful Soyuz launch with the Progress resupply ship. And I have more footage from the ISPC conference and I might show more of uh, Robert Bigelow's talk when uh, it's appropriate because he talked a lot more about uh, his company Bigelow Aerospace and what's going on with the American space program right now so I'll show more of that when it's relevant. Anyway, thanks for watching and don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.